right then. So, can. Considered. In fact, an easy boss here, right at the start of the Bastion of the Penitent. But you know what? I actually disagree. I think can is actually quite hard, and I think it smashes pugs left and right. This is annihilation. In fact, it really, really is. So, let's get the, uh, let's get the dirty, let's get the details here on Kern, the Indomitable. So, the key mechanic here involves going into green circles, and it involves not standing in red circles, and knowing if you have a red circle. So, first mechanic here is that periodically, the boss will spawn green circles with little, like, almost like little dots above them, okay? You need to have at least the number of dots to go into the green circle, otherwise the green circle won't save you. The boss will basically spawn the circles and then start charging up an attack that if you don't get, if you don't, if you're not in a green with enough people in it, it nukes you and it also lifts you into the air and gives you stacks of a debuff. Throughout this entire fight, you'll get one clock stack per second, which makes you move slower to the point where if you have 99 stacks, you cannot move without swiftness. Very, very annoying. To kind of count this a little bit, the devs gave you an action key, and this is a very useful ability. It gives you an evade to dodge any attack that you want, but it also lets you, well, it lets you bug out and not go anywhere. But what you can do here is you can actually go to a green circle, even if you're very, very slow. So save that to going for a green or avoiding an important attack. So, periodically, the furthest player away from the boss will also go ahead and get a red AoE, an agony on them, a uh, shared agony. You need to not be in the group there. As the, uh, if three people will get hit by agony if you um, if you overlap with them. The first will take 25% of their max health and damage. The second, 50. And the third, 75. So you can really see how massively dangerous that ability is. So make sure that you are out of the group. The way you manage these is like this. There'll be three agonies up at any given time. So have your non-agony players stack on arrow and your agonied players be on circle, uh, heart, and square. Make sure you're kind of within this inner ring though because the boss's auto attack is very, very dangerous actually. Uh, he'll fire up projectiles that will CC you, dealing massive damage, and his auto attack hurts a lot, right? He aggro's on the furthest person away, so make sure um, that your DPS group is actually a little bit further away than your agonies, so your agonies don't take any fire that they don't have to do, right? Very, very important on that. Okay, the boss also, ha like Veilgun, has teleports. You'll see little red AoEs, red and blue, like weird AoEs near the boss, don't get teleported, boom, easy. Don't reflect the boss's auto attacks because even when you reflect, the attacks are actually still hostile to you and this will CC your entire group and you're going to be very, very sad indeed. Okay, stability is very good here because it can prevent getting knocked back. It can also prevent being lifted into the air on a green. You can just out heal the greens if you want to there as well. But again, I'd recommend doing it normally, particularly if you want to get the achievements here because you need to actually do it correctly uh, to get your legendary armor if you want to do that. The boss now has a few other attacks. He'll sometimes slam his sword onto the ground, spinning around and knocking you away. Just go ahead and dodge that, kind of wait until it starts spinning, then do one dodge roll or use the action key. That will keep you alive. He'll sometimes start jumping around the room, teleporting everywhere, placing down green circles to stand in there because he's about to do his uh, kind of like, you know, his green circle attack. Don't stand where the boss is going because he'll like dash and the dash will damage and cc you so watch out for that if the fight goes on for an unbelievably long time he'll start pounding the ground doing like a donut attack that will knock you off the platform so if that happens just stay central you won't see that most of the time because it's actually time based um and hp based so you have to have very low dps for that to happen or maybe loads of people die but if that does happen just stay towards the center or an action key towards the center and you will be good to go. That's about it for Ken. Let's leap on right into it. When it comes to agony assignments, I actually don't think it matters that much which players get it. Like, typically you'll see players say, oh, have the, you know, the, the low DPS players, it, say like support players getting it. However, in Pugs, this is typically very unreliable, so I wouldn't actually worry about it too much. But yeah, you can have, say, your Chronomancers take it, or your, you know, maybe your your alacrity take it or whatever, and they can still give boons by being in range, right? Like if the alacrity is standing here, right, uh, they the agony won't get you, but the alac still will, right? And everyone's still going to get buffs. But in general, the really important thing here is make sure your agonies don't overlap, particularly when you're going to a green circle. Stack together as much as you possibly can. Hit the boss very, very hard, and this guy is a golem. This guy attacks very, very fast, and that's where agony, uh, sorry, torment 
and uh, confusion are very, very good here. Like, mirages are amazing here. This boss is going to get absolutely destroyed if you have that, and it's going to be brutal. Again, like I said, stability, so your mesmers can take mantra of concentration. Firebrand here is great for the same reason. Trail of Anguish is good for the same reason. Everything is good for the same reason. Just be very, very careful when you use your reflects, otherwise you're going to die. So here goes the boss. Oh, nice. We got meme there, a little bit too far away from the boss. And see, you can see how uh, you know annoying that CC can be. So in general, you want to go ahead and hug that boss as much as you can until the agony starts spawning. So get ready for the agony. Here we go. Get ready, get ready, get ready. So there's the agony. We got it on our chronomons. You see we moved out there to guarantee it because, again, it's on the furthest person. Okay, the furthest person it. He can also now tank the boss because that's our Chrono Monster. So he can actually go ahead and tank it. But as you can see, having on the DPS is actually really good because it means that uh, it doesn't do a lounge. In general, you well, did Pugs do this and Mygo is doing this? So I will do it as well. But actually, I am now going to, you know, we're disobeying my own rules in the guide. In general, going for the big one is actually really good um, because there's actually enough space in that for an agony to not intersect with players and also have everyone in there. I'm going to just slightly move out to the edge here to make sure we have the aggro on the boss. There we go. Now we go to the circle again. We can just go to this green one here. Go to this. Uh, ever they're, they're skipping it because they're greedy, right? They're greedy. And on normal mode here, you're absolutely free to do that, by the way, guys. You are completely free to do that. Like, it's no, uh, it's not punishing whatsoever uh, to go ahead and skip that mechanic. You can simply ignore it and it won't be a bother. But yeah, as you can see, very, very simple. In fact, I'll just demonstrate the skip here. We're going to stab everyone up here with Trail of Anguish and just ignore it. Barrier it, ignore it. And there it is. Teleports are here, as you can see. Boss is doing stuff. Agony is being a bit annoying, but as you can see, we're handling it well. And stuff like Heal Necro is great here. You might get a lot of downsets from the Agony, but it doesn't matter because the boss is already dead. There it is, my friends. There it is. Boom! Bit of a weird boss, bit of a mishmash of mechanics, but not too bad. Ken falls.